We hear it every time anyone says anything critical of Islam. Freedom of speech isn't freedom to offend. First of all, yes it is. Second of all, you hypocrites. Your freedom ends when you start offending two billion Muslims. Does it now? Freedom of expression is a right. However, one is not allowed to insult the sentiments of others in the name of freedom. No insulting the sentiments of others. Does freedom of expression mean insulting, especially a sacred personage? The president of Indonesia declared, Freedom of speech that injures the noble purity and sacred values and symbol of religion is so wrong it shouldn't be justified and it needs to stop. The president of Egypt added, We also have rights. We have the right for our feelings not to be hurt and for our values not to be hurt. And if some have the freedom to express what is in their thoughts, I imagine that this stops when it comes to offending the feelings of more than 1.5 billion people. All right, I think we get it now. We have freedom of speech, but only if our speech doesn't offend other people, and only if our speech doesn't insult people's religious beliefs. That's the rule, right Muslims? Wonderful. Let's stick with that rule for a bit. Surah 98 verse 6 of the Quran. Verily, those who disbelieve in the religion of Islam, the Quran, and Prophet Muhammad, from among the people of the Scripture, Jews and Christians, and al-Mushrikun, those are idolaters, will abide in the fire of hell. They are the worst of creatures. So, Jews, Christians, and other non-Muslims are the worst of all creatures. We're lower than dogs. We're lower than pigs. That's highly offensive to billions of people, don't you think? Does this mean that the Quran should be banned as hate speech? It's a serious question, Muslims. You're the ones who insist that freedom of speech doesn't include the freedom to offend. The Quran is extremely offensive, so it's not protected by freedom of speech, right? In the history of Atabari, one of the polytheists tells Muhammad, that if he loses the fight against his own tribe, his followers will abandon him. Abu Bakr, the first of the rightly guided caliphs, replies to the polytheist in the presence of Muhammad, Go suck the clitoris of Allah. Would we flee and leave him? So Abu Bakr tells the man to go perform oral sex on Allah, his goddess. Do you condemn Abu Bakr for his hate speech, Muslims? Do you condemn Muhammad for not punishing Abu Bakr? These are your rules. I'm just applying them. Speaking of your prophet, the Quran calls him a wonderful pattern of conduct. In Sahih al-Bukhari 2478, Muhammad conquers Mecca. Let's see how respectful Muhammad was towards the religious symbols of others. The prophet entered Mecca, and at that time, there were 360 idols around the Kaaba. He started stabbing the idols with a stick he had in his hand and reciting, Truth, Islam has come, and falsehood, disbelief, has vanished. Muhammad went around stabbing the idols of the polytheists. Was that wrong, Muslims? You say it's wrong and immoral to disrespect other people's religious symbols. But your prophet disrespected other people's religious symbols. So? Now, I could go on, but I think we have enough to see Islam's free speech dilemma. If freedom of speech doesn't include the freedom to offend other people, and if freedom of expression doesn't include the right to insult other people's religious beliefs and religious symbols, then the Quran and other Muslim sources should be banned as hate speech. And Muhammad and his closest companions were evil, disgusting people who should be condemned, not imitated. Alternatively, if we're not going to ban the Quran and other Muslim sources, then freedom of speech does include the right to offend other people. And freedom of expression does include the right to insult other people's religious beliefs and religious symbols. 
How do our Muslim friends avoid this obvious dilemma? By being complete, utter, total hypocrites. When Muslims say that freedom of speech doesn't include the right to offend, they wouldn't dream of applying this rule to themselves and to their own book and to their own prophet and to their own religion. It's a rule for us, not for them. The real rule goes something like this. Muslims can offend non-Muslims and insult their beliefs all they want, but non-Muslims must never offend Muslims or insult their beliefs. Anything Islam teaches, no matter how offensive it is to others, is protected by freedom of speech. Anything that goes against Islam must be banned. In other words, what Muslims are actually demanding is Sharia. They're demanding that we obey the commands of an illiterate 7th century Arabian caravan robber. They're demanding that we adhere to rules that they would never apply to themselves. They're demanding that we submit to the hypocrisy of their religion. On behalf of every free non-Muslim in the world, I reply, no. Muslims, if we want to make fun of your fake prophet and your stupid book, then we will make fun of your fake prophet and your stupid book. You don't control us. We are not, have never been, and never will be your dimmies. And if you have a problem with that, you have my full permission to cry me a river.